what's going on everyone this is your boy ash the man thank you so much for tuning in so we are here to discuss and review Kengen Assure second part to season one now this second part to season one was amazing and I mean I don't just want to just like throw it over the top like it didn't have any moments in there that was like not great because they had some moments in there that I that they could have just like pushed out a little bit faster than what they were trying to do but nevertheless let's hit it. let's definitely touch bases on it so the way that I want to start this off is that now in the last season and which was the first season well first parts of the season to be exact now they have talked about him they have mentioned him and only few people ever seen him but now since he hit the arena Akito was introduced which he is the fave and is supposed to be the strongest person there now when you see his match against um, Okubo it was very interesting to see that Okubo definitely hold this in I mean if Okubo went against anybody else in there and I do mean this with what I'm saying if he went went against almost anybody that was there he probably would have won but he went against Okuto which matched him every way and more and Okuto really like took him down I mean he was able to adapt he was able to really kind of like ration punches and everything I mean Agato definitely is the person that Soma has to like you know live up to not saying that every other fighter in here ain't good because of course you got Makosuchi you you definitely have Zori um you definitely have on uh, Gaiolong and you definitely have uh Amai but Let's just say this Agato is definitely in his own league. Now, we did like you know get a chance to see Wakasuki, which he took out his person one hit, and that's Wakasuki is aiming for Agato, so he definitely know that he's definitely a part and at, at this current level is stronger than Oma. So we are gonna definitely see that. Now, one of the things that got me about this season, and I'ma just get the bad out the way because it's only so little, and not and it get, deals with two matches. Now. Amai match, um, his match kind of like dwelled on with um, Akaya way too long. Like, I mean, the match could have definitely went, you know, a little bit faster if you ask me, in my opinion, because Amai is not a bad fight, but Akaya, uh, Akaya, and the way that he definitely delivers his fight was definitely interesting. But when you actually get to see the fight and you see that he basically went into this murderous intent, even though he talked about justice. It was showed that, you know, pretty much Amai um, kind of like, you know, broke through his limits and was able to overcome Akaya and basically submission him in which that was the fight. I mean, I think that could have went a little bit faster than what they did. Even in the match where they introduced uh, Kuraiki, which he's the experienced assassin. And by them, like, introducing him, Rahato was his opponent. And Rahato, to me, I mean... Unfortunately, he sounds cool because, you know, his fingertips can definitely slice up skin and even bones. But it goes into one of them character plot things. Like, when they introduce the first villain to any series, the first villain gets overshadowed or definitely gets put down as being not that strong. Even though that, in my opinion, he is strong, but he just get, like, pushed out about, like, so many people. And it definitely did show... So with that being said, I mean, I think in this particular fight, you know, they definitely could have ended that, um, you know, way sooner. They didn't even need to take that long just to get them out the way. So, yeah. But other than that, when you start stacking up all the other things that is definitely going on, man, we have some definitely interesting fight. Like when you actually see the doctor going against um, Bendo and he basically lost the fight, but intentionally he infected him with bullet on um, with his blood which has some type of disease that you know definitely he took the time to plant it and with uh, Bindo not able to like kind of like you know treat it he just kicked the dust so that fight kind of like in a voice but it was definitely interesting to see that the doctor definitely holds some significance to other fighters even though he lost he he still hold, holds a you know special place for you know his fighting style now, when you commit like all the other things that you wanted to see in there, like Hisumi um, going against uh, Chaba, uh, Chabi was like the person that imitates like you know everybody else like fighting style. 
but Hasumi, you just really just don't know what was going on with him because if you look back in the first season, they say that you know pretty much he he knows for slacking, ditching fights, don't really participate. And then if you listen to him, he actually got L's, but I mean he, he definitely does have a lot more wins. But when you look at everybody else, you're like, dang, all these other people haven't lost, but he did. But you know what? That's experience because after they exchanged some blows a few times, and you just see him just lay my man's out. Twenty six seconds feel good about yourself G because you need to stop in and actually get your own style I definitely thought it was going to be more than meets the eye with that now um can uh Kennedy against going long now I ain't gonna lie going long I thought he was weak I'm not even gonna hold you up the reason I thought he was weak is because you always see him in the stands you always hear him talking he doesn't really have like that 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 strong demeanor by itself but no never judge a book by his cover because when you start looking up and they start doing a little back history on him man his boxing was crazy and i'm like somebody get 13 times in one second that was not the thing that i wanted to believe but when you seen the match he just gave kanadi um the hits i'm like yo he's winning and even though they stretched it out and again it goes to one of those fights that they just kind of like slimmer down kanadi to in my opinion wasn't gonna last long because he has to take his to analyze and there's only so much the human body can take so Long at that point was going to win anyway so that was a given but knocking out all these like fights one of the ones that kind of like because Akato fight definitely does hit one of the fights that I wanted to see definitely was one of the best but also um uh Karayu uh Cessna which is you know of course the guy who's obsessed with seeing you know Omar going to that low like God form that he calls it which technically he just busting up his blood and just turning red and just going berserk but his fight was definitely interesting because you get to see his fighting style finally and who he was going against was even good and that was Ren now Ren definitely added some interesting things to the fight but Cessna pretty much had it because his um, blink was just crazy he could just move that fast and then by him like just touching a part of your muscle ripping it and twisting it like that that is crazy but it was definitely interesting because you actually get to finally see what he's made of and if i'm pretty sure if you would have took the fight a lot seriously could have ended quickly but you know he gave the people a demonstration you know as crazy as he is he's one of my favorite there you know i ain't gonna lie to you now the main thing that I want to talk about in here, and this focus around Soma fight, is the one of the things that they kind of like build up for the protagonist. Now, if you didn't see it a mile away and understand like how season one paired out, um, Oma, you know, the way he fights is that like he he kind of like noticed the weakness in people and kind of like exploited. But you never really seen him use his techniques besides when he was on a boat when he actually saw uh, the uh, Nico style, which. He did it on um, Jerry uh, uh, Tyson, which was definitely interesting, but they, he really didn't see it after that. But however, he actually was conflicting with himself because when he seen his teacher die, you know, pretty much the person who taught him the own Nico style, he pretty much didn't have faith in it. And one of the things that they said, and which a lot of people aren't sure realize is that if you don't have faith in your fighting style and you use it in the fight, uh, you're not really gonna go far. Now, Cessna, on the other hand, wants Oma to go berserk and use that red style with which they said that he speeds up his heart rate, which sounds almost like Luffy's, but I'm not gonna just try to compare and contrast that, but, he basically, you know, speed up his heart rate, his skin and everything turns red and he gets stronger over time. But however, it shortens his life, you know, and he basically, if he gets hit a certain way in a fight, I'm assuming like towards the heart, he can die. So after he battled with himself, conflicting with his teacher and spirit, you know, he finally gave the Nico style the perfect attention that he did. And once he started using it, Kira pretty much became obsolete. He started beating my man's ass. <laughs> Excuse my language, but he gave him hands. And that's the whole purpose of King Ashra, is to give people hands and stand on top. And sure, even though you was awesome and crazy, and 
like my boy Drew really does, you know, like like the character following with him, but he lost. And unfortunately, to see Oma kind of like grow as a character and in a crazy way because in the first part of the season, it really didn't look like so um Oma was really like you know conflicting with himself with the Nico style. It didn't start coming out until part two, but it made sense of part one when you see him only use the Nico style on a boat and then use it in the actual fight. There you go. So season two definitely took off with not season two, I'm sorry. Well season one part two, it took off in the right manner with introducing like the remainder of the cast and you kind of get to see these fights the remainder of the first round of the tournament and then you get to see two matches with Rosoma and Omani's first matches of it so with that being said Omani and um and Oma may be fighting in round three let's hope <laughs> but I definitely want to see these next matchups and hopefully we don't have to wait too long for season two but again this season you definitely get my thumbs up I'm happy for it I'm glad that we got introduced of the remaining cast of the tournament so now let's jump into that round two uh, for frontal other than that, I just want to thank you guys for definitely tuning in to my review with King and Ashra Season 1 Part 2. Season Part 2 it was definitely amazing. I'm glad to add a little bit of a conflicting story, which definitely added some, you know, some view time for it. Instead of it just being a beat em up, they put a little storyline in there, dicing things up. You, know, um, you get to see a little bit of story with... Um, with you know Oma's you know manager kind of like you know him in the conflict with his son and the curl fight was definitely more than meets the eye so definitely hit it on that and yeah but just let me know down in the uh, com um, comments what was your favorite fight in part two again my favorite fight was when they introduced Agato because of the fact you actually get to see him go in and that smile he gave Ooh. So yeah, just let me know down in the comments. Um, uh, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification button, and Ashton Man is out. Have a good one.